Man, this video is going to be a little bit old school because we're going to be using this. This is what people like to call high star or bungee, but it's a fancy name for just a bunch of very long rubber band and fishing line. With this, we can make our RC glider take off to a certain altitude, depending on how long your setup is. And then you can release from there and you are good to glide for a long period of time. And luckily, if you find some thermals, you can stay in the air for a quite a long time. So uh, this is a, I say it's an old school because not much people are using this anymore because it's a little bit of work that you have to do in the field. And also uh, it's a lot cheaper and easier and convenient to use a motor inside your airplane or your glider and with folding propellers. So as you are about to see, that's a much more convenient setup than using this, although this might be a little bit cheaper, but not so much. Today you can find very cheap motors, very cheap ESCs and propellers and all of that. And this is very inconvenient. So let's see the video and let's see why this is very inconvenient, but it was fun. And you can still use this system if you want, you know, some classic lighting. So let's take a look. So I went to the biggest area I know where I have permission to fly as a member of the club. This place is perfect because we have all the space we need to launch this glider with this system. In my setup I'm using 20 meters of rubber band or 65 feet and 100 meters of fishing line or 300 feet. The weather was okay for flying because there wasn't much wind. The problem is that there is not much sun. And the sun is needed to heat up the surface to create thermals. I've tried before catching some thermals in this field, flying my Epsilon XL3, even with the help of a variometer in that glider, but I didn't have any luck. If you want to see the entire video of this flight, check out the link in the description below. To set up this simple system is going to take me about 10 minutes. I have to lay out the fishing line in a way that it doesn't get entangled with anything else, and then I start making the knots. The nuts have to be very well done, strong, and very secure. Otherwise you are risking to have an accident and it's not gonna be pleasant, especially in this place where there is people going around. I'm going to take the line and start stretching it. I'm gonna hook it to the glider using a metal keyring, and I have to walk about 200 meters in one direction to stretch the line to its maximum. Now the metal keyring can be attached directly to the line with a little flag, or it can be attached to a small parachute that will work a lot better. The small parachute will make it release from the hook a lot better, and it will make it more visible when it's descending. So here I am, ready to launch the first time, but I had to hold it because someone was walking around. After that, I was ready for the first launch. I'm pretty sure that I walk around okay. 70 meters to stretch the rubber band, and now I'm getting around 4 kilograms of pull or something like that. In my first launch, I didn't know where exactly was the best moment to release the hook. So I was trying to release the glider from the hook earlier than I should, and also because I'm not used to this perspective and I didn't know if I was already past the point where I needed to release it or not, but in the end it gained enough altitude. From the moment I started to set up the bungee until the first flight, I spent around 20 minutes on the setup only. So it's a bit of work to launch a glider with the system. The nice part about today's weather is that there is not much wind so I can fly gently. Now a rough estimation of the duration of this first flight is that from the moment it reached its maximum altitude until the landing, it took about 1 minute and 49 seconds, which is very low. But that might be due to its early release and poor flying, so let's try it again. And the next launch, I have to look for the fishing line again and stretch it and repeat the process. This takes about 3 to 5 minutes. 
For the next launch, I walk maybe 10 meters farther back and I did the launch. Of course I tried to hold the glider in flight for as long as I could, but as you can see in the clouds, there was no chance that I was getting a thermal. But this flight lasted 2 minutes and 9 seconds. Few seconds more than the last time. It flies beautifully in calm wind. I kept doing a couple more launches, although it takes a little bit of work to find the line, stretch it again, and all of that. I still prefer to put a motor and a folding propeller in my glider, especially because the weight is not a problem for me because I'm using some lead and a big battery in the nose of the glider. So if I put a motor and a folding propeller with a big battery, it's still gonna be almost the same weight. For some people with very high performance gliders, very lightweight, they will need to launch it with this and it will be a lot better than having a motor on board. But for me, all this trouble is not worth it. I prefer to put the motor. There's also the problem of space and safety. There's a lot of people walking around this park, so I have to be careful with them and it can be an issue if something goes wrong with this. Even with all of those disadvantages, I had a little bit of fun. If you want to know more information about the Bungie or High Start launch, I'll leave a link in the description that will take you to a post at joyplans.com. For now, I hope you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next project.